So I had a video request asking me to make a reply to a video by Zakir Naik. If you don't know who Zakir Naik is, he's a pretty famous Indian Islamic preacher who used to train as a medical doctor. So now, let's tear apart one of his speeches, shall we? With regard to the evolution of Homo sapiens, you have Charles Darwin in science giving an explanation that it's because of the process of natural selection that the human beings have evolved. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, he does a lot of Q&As and stuff, and this girl is asking him a question, so I'm just going to roll the clip until there's an appropriate response I can make. Now this is, seems to be in contradiction with the Islamic belief that we have, we are the children of Adam alayhi salam. Now how can this be reconciled? This is a very important question. No lecture of mine on this topic of Quran modern science is complete without this question. I've given this talk in various places, in Canada, in USA, in UK, in Saudi. Never is this topic complete, never is the question also complete without this important question of theory of evolution. Charles Darwin, sister posed the question, how can you reconcile the Quran with Darwin's theory of evolution? I can already feel it. He's going to make some stupid response. Sister, I have not come across any book which says fact of evolution. All the books say theory of evolution. There's no book I've come across saying fact of evolution. These fucking people are clapping? Get the fuck out of here. This just demonstrates a clear lack of knowledge of how scientific terminology works. And this guy was a practicing medical doctor. I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but a scientific theory means, by definition, something that has been proven over and over again that it is basically true. It's different than our regular use of theory, and also the evolution theory refers to Darwin's theory, specifically natural selection. So right now you're addressing Darwin's theory of evolution, not evolution itself. These are two different things. Darwin's theory of evolution is a mechanism of the grand scheme of evolution. If you read the book by Charles Darwin, The Origin of Species, it says that Charles Darwin went on an island by the name of Calatropus, on a ship named as HMS Beagle. And there, he found birds pecking at niches. Depending upon the ecological niches they pecked, the beaks sorry, kept on becoming long and short. No, the beaks didn't just become long and sharp. Certain species obtained sharp beaks, but it wasn't all of them. Their beaks changed depending on what food source was available. For example, if the food available were hard seeds, the beak would evolve to be very thick. If they had cactus fruit, their beaks would be very sharp. And because it was dependent on the food source, the observation was significant. He showed that the beak's shapes adapted for different populations at different niches, which is significant proof for natural selection. This observation was made in the same species, not in different species. Whoa, 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 now that's just a flat out lie. These finches were different species. Sure, they were closely related species, but different species nonetheless. Charles Darwin wrote a letter to his friend Thomas Thompson. In 1861, saying, I do not believe in natural selection, the word that you used. I don't believe in theory of evolution because I've got any proof. I only believe in it because it helps me in classification of embryology, in morphology, in rudimentary organs. I'm going to pull out the whole text here. It says, I believe in natural selection not because I can prove in any single case that has changed one species into another, but because it groups and explains well, as it seems to me, a host of facts of classification, embryology, morphology, rudimentary organs, geological succession, and distribution. So first off, he says pretty clearly that he believes in natural selection, but then he tells you why, and all he said is that he doesn't have evidence of natural selection changing one species into another. Instead, he believes it because it explains our classification and morphology. Let's look at the first part of the sentence again. He can't prove natural selection changing one species into another. He's specifically referring to natural selection being the cause of one species turning into another, not questioning speciation itself. But you creationists love doing this. You love to either quote mine, take quotes out of context, or just misread quotes entirely. Charles Darwin himself said that there were missing links. He didn't agree with it. He himself said that there were missing links. Even if that were true, Darwin isn't like the ultimate super definitive authority of evolution, alright? He created the theory, but that doesn't mean he's responsible for 100% of our knowledge on it. Since his time, we have added so much to his theory. Thousands and thousands of scientists have found so much and have done so much to fortify the theory of evolution. Even if Darwin just flat out said that natural selection is not true, it would still be true. The reason that this theory, in most parts of the world, it is taught as good as fact. You know why? Even I was in school, I learned about Darwin's theory. And even today they are taught. You know what the reason is, sister? Brace yourself for some stupid conspiracy theory. The reason is because that if you analyze the church, the church 
was against science previously. And you know the incidents that they sentenced Galileo to death. They sentenced Galileo to death. Why? Because he said certain statements in astronomy, etc., which went against the Bible, so they sentenced him to death, for which the Pope apologized now. Did anyone catch that? I've watched this part like five times trying to figure out what he's saying, but <laughs> I'm sorry, I normally have no problem understanding accents, but this time I actually can't tell what he's saying. So, when Charles Darwin came up with a theory which goes against the Bible, they didn't, they didn't want any sufficient proof. An enemy of my enemy is my friend. So all the scientists, most of them, they support the theory because it went against the Bible, not because it was true. Fuck you, dude. That's not true, and I'll tell you why. Long before Darwin came around, we knew evolution happened. We knew that organisms changed in some way. For example, right before Darwin, the popular idea was Lamarckism. Lamarck proposed that organisms evolved by a method that allowed them to acquire traits that they needed and then passing them off to their offspring. Of course, this was not accepted and eventually overrun by Darwin, but the point is, evolution was well accepted before Darwin. Darwin only proposed the mechanism, not evolution itself. All the stages I mentioned, sister. All the stages. Lucy. There were four hominoids. Science tells us today there's four hominoids. Oh my god, like, I can understand parts of what he's saying, but a lot of it I'm just like, what the fuck? Okay, let's just go on and see what we can make out from this, but it doesn't seem like it's gonna get any better. First is Lucy. Along with this guy, the Australopithecus. Along with those guys, the Australopithecus? That's what I'm getting here. If I heard right, then I'm gonna have to say that Lucy is an Australopithecus. So, what the fuck are you saying? Which died about three and a half million years. Nice age. Ten and a half million years? The fossil was dated to 3.2 million years. Then, next came the Homo sapiens. What the fuck is this list? He said earlier that it was like the four hominids or something? We died about 500,000 years ago. Homo sapiens dying about 500,000 years ago? I mean, okay, fine, to be fair, in the video here you did put a caption, Archaic Homo sapiens, also Homo heidelbergensis. The thing is, the Archaic Homo sapiens included a lot of species. It includes the Neanderthals, the Rhodesiensis, the Antecessor, and of course, the Heidelbergensis. I'm still unsure about what your list really means, but hopefully we'll get to know soon enough. Then came the Neanderthal man. We died 100 to 40,000 years ago. Well, it seems we have a problem with your list here. The Homo Neanderthals are included in the Archaic Humans category. Then came the fourth stage, the Cro-Magnon. The Cro-Magnon is a vague terminology used to describe early Homo sapiens sapiens. It doesn't even refer to anything specific. My guess is that you're listing these things thinking there's some sort of hardcore evidence we use to prove evolution, and for some reason you decided to stick to human evolution. There is no link at all between these stages! What the fuck are you talking about no link at all? I can't even get into all the detail otherwise we'd be here all year. But in short, these are all part of humans' natural history. You want a link? Here's the link. All the things you named can be mapped out on a tree of evolution. Using various evidence, we can physically pinpoint exact parts of human history and what our ancestors were like. Is that a good enough link for you? According to P.P. Grasse in 1971, who held the chair of evolutionary studies in Paris, in the Shoujo University, he said, it is absurd. We cannot see who are ancestors based on fossils. I can give you a list of hundreds of scientists and Nobel Prize winners who speak against Darwin's theory. Hundreds! An overwhelming 97% of scientists accept evolution and mark creation science as junk science. And the scientists that reject evolution? They're not biologists. They're entirely composed of scientists of other fields. And that really says something. If you know of Sir Albert Georgi, who got the Nobel Prize for inventing, for inventing the vitamin C. He wrote a book, The Crazy Ape and Man, against Darwin theory. Okay, I'm not going to double check what you're claiming, but here's the thing. You can't just keep quoting others and saying, oh look, this guy supports me, therefore I'm right. That's not how debates work. You have to provide the arguments, not cower behind someone else. Again, if you read Sir Fred Hoyle's work, he wrote several works against Darwin theory. If you know about Rupert Talbot, this person wrote a new theory of evolution against Darwin's theory. Well, if he did, he's only challenging natural selection, which is a mechanism of evolution. Even if Darwin's theory was proven to be false, evolution itself would still be a thing. It's unthinkable. We cannot think that we are created from the apes. Well, that's because intuition is literally an enemy when you're looking at certain fields of science. If you know of Sir Frank Salisbury, he was a biologist. He said it is illogical to believe in Darwin's theory. If you know about white meat, so white meat, he wrote a book 
against David Fay. He was also a biologist. Holy shit, I can't keep doing this. All he's doing is saying, look, here's someone who thinks Darwin's theory is false, therefore it's false. Okay, I'm gonna go and preview the rest of the video to see if he brings up anything new. Stay here, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So he just continues to say that there's no evidence for evolution. Oh, and something about homosexuality. And then he talks about the Quran a bit. I swear his English gets harder and harder to understand towards the end of the video, so I'm gonna end it right here. I know I didn't manage to go through the whole video, but I hope my more frequent video release schedule this week makes up for that. The link will be in the description for anyone who wants to check out the whole video. Anyway, I hope I can get out another video by this weekend, so stay tuned.